What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Crack a Pack series. Very, very excited because today, for maybe the third time, I think, in this entire series and almost 350 episodes, we're getting close to it, we are opening up a pack of Alliances. Now, this is a very, very old set, 1996, if I'm not mistaken. I did not play, in that d play during that time because I was only three, uh, and so I don't really know what to expect out of this set. We're hopefully going to be able to figure out what our draft pick will be. Uh, the special card in this set, I will go ahead and say, uh, it's the one we're looking for, it is it Uncommon, uh, is Force of Will. That is definitely the card that we want. I do not know uh, what order these are in. I do. I, I want to say that it's the Uncommons first, then the Rare, then, then the Commons, but they're not marked, and I don't know this set well enough to say, so we're just going to go through this, see what we get. So our first card here is Death Spark. It is an instant for one red. It deals one damage to target creature or player. At the end of your upkeep, if Death Spark is in your graveyard with a creature card directly above it, you can pay one of any color to put Death Spark into your hand. Uh, very interesting text on this. Uh, obviously, it's very dependent on what's going to be on top of it in the graveyard to be able to, to bring this back. It is only one damage for one mana, but I have to assume that's actually pretty good return uh, in this set because creatures tended not to be the most powerful thing in the world uh, in the olden days of magic, uh, which I would certainly say this qualifies. So to be able to deal one damage potentially repeated, I'm in for. I do think it's perfectly fine. I don't think it's an amazing card. Hopefully we get something better, but I think it's a decent start. We'll see what we get, of course, through the rest of the pack. Uh, Elvish Bard is an elf for three and two green. It is a two four. Uh, all creatures able to block it do so. If this forces a creature to block more attackers than allowed, defending player may assign that creature to block as many of those attackers as allowed. That's a very interesting read as well. Uh, essentially, this is a bait creature. Uh, I don't think it's an amazing creature, but it is a 2-4 for 5. And again, with the creatures not being quite so powerful back in the day, I don't think this is actually as bad as it seems. Uh, the art is very silly. Uh, absolutely hilarious but uh i don't know if it's better than death spark if i'm honest uh i don't necessarily think it is but that four toughness makes me think okay maybe it's a little bit better than i'm thinking uh the fact that everything is kind of forced to block it i kind of really like but the fact that it allows your opponent's creatures to block more than one creature i think is quite bad so i think i'm going to pass on it again i don't know if that's correct uh, i don't know this set super well so we'll do the best we can but uh i i think i like death spark better uh, Mystic Compass is an artifact for two of any color. You can pay one and tap it. Uh, target mana producing land becomes a basic land type of your choice until the end of the turn. This is a very roundabout way of getting mana fixing in, and uh, it's very simple terms. Uh, I do not love it. Uh, I love that there's a quote by Jaya on here. I think that's cool, but uh, I do think this is just a bad card. It does allow you to splash some stuff, so I think if you find yourself in a multicolor deck, fine, go for it. But I don't think it's good. It doesn't forward your game plan, and it doesn't ramp you. Uh, and I think if it ramped you, I'd be much more in, but it is just filtering that land. It's not actually uh, uh, adding any mana to your mana pool. So I don't love this. I uh, definitely think Death Spark is better in this case. <clears throat> oh, wow. Uh, I do believe this is the rare Lake of the Dead. It is a land. When it comes into play, you have to sacrifice a swamp or you'd bury Lake of the Dead, which just means you sacrifice it. Uh, you can tap it and you add a swamp to your mana pool or tap it, sacrifice a swamp and add four swamp to your mana pool or four black to your mana pool. That's actually really interesting. I don't know if that's a good card for limited, I have no idea. Uh, that's so much mana to get off of one land. Now, yes, you have to sacrifice the land and eventually that kind of net loses some mana, I suppose, uh, if you're just sacrificing your lands because you're not actually forwarding your land count. Uh, but that's a lot of ramp very, very early uh, to be able to do some hopefully broken stuff. So I I don't know. I'm going to keep it with Death Spark for now. We'll look at the rest of the pack. Uh, hopefully that'll help us kind of determine what the best pick is through this, but uh, so far I'm still kind of leaning towards a Death Spark, if I'm honest, but this is a very good pull. I'm actually really stoked about this. Uh, Taste of Paradise is a sorcery for three and a green. You gain three life, and then gain three life for each one and a green you pay in addition to the casting cost. So this does allow you to gain just tons and tons of life. I don't love cards like these. You guys have heard this a million times. I don't think life gain is a good 
all in strategy uh, when it comes to limited it's very similar to fog effects things like that it stalls the game which is perfectly fine if you're gonna do something at the end of it unfortunately with cards like this they can't do anything other than gain you life and so it's not the best thing in my opinion uh, that being said if you find yourself up against an aggro deck I don't hate this as a sideboard card. I think that's definitely a consideration. But again, definitely not as a first pick. I don't think it's the best card in the world. Uh, Fintorn Druid is a 2-2 two -two for 2 and a green. Uh, if it's put into the graveyard the same turn it was blocked, you gain 4 life. So, interesting. Uh, it encourages you to attack a little bit, uh, which is fine. But it is a 2-2 two -two for 3, I guess. Again, we're looking at less powerful creatures. I think it's kind of just an okay three drop. I don't think it's a reason to be in green, so I don't think I want to first pick it here, but uh, I think if I find myself there, definitely a reasonable card to hopefully wheel or something like that. Uh, Visrid Armor is an enchant creature for one and a blue. The enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and you can pay one and a blue and return the armor to its owner's hand. Uh, normally I hate enchant creatures. This I don't hate quite as much, uh, solely because you can bounce it back. Uh, and I think that's actually a really nice feature of an enchanted creature because it just means you're not opening yourself up for that two for one value all the time. Now, obviously you have to do this in response to a kill spell. Otherwise, you know, it just goes to the graveyard. So do keep that in mind. You're going to have to leave up mana. I don't think this is worth it, but I, I like cards like this that give you a really big, uh, uh, at least some kind of a buff, I should say, and then allow themselves to be bounced back and reused. I think that's perfectly fine. I just wish the buff was bigger, unfortunately. That 1-1, one, one, not a huge deal in my opinion. <clears throat> uh, Storm Shaman is a 0-4 for 2 and a red. You can pay a red and it gets plus one plus zero until the end of the turn. Interesting card for sure. It is a bit of a mana sink, uh, which can be good or bad depending on how you look at it. Uh, the fact though that you do have to sink mana into this to make it really good, I don't like. Uh, that being said, it can actually just do tons and tons of damage if you get the right board state. I do think that's a bit of a pipe dream, but you could. Uh, it is a zero four, so it's going to be able to block a decent amount of things. I do want to point that out. Uh, and I think that's okay, but again, I don't love it. Uh, I think it, it's not the best card in the world. I, I don't think it's a good card here. <clears throat> uh, Whip Vine is a summon wall uh, for one and a... F one, it's a one four, excuse me, uh, for two and a green. Uh, it can block creatures with flying. Uh, you may choose not to untap it during your untap step. And you can tap it and tap target creature with flying blocked by Whip Vine. Uh, that creature does not untap during its controller's untap phase, and as long as you control, uh, or, excuse me, as long as what vine remains tapped. Uh, interesting that this is kind of a removal spell for uh, a flyer. I kind of like that. Uh, not only that, but it serves a purpose just outside of that as well. I think it's a fairly flexible card, honestly. Uh, I don't hate it, uh, if I'm going to be honest. It's really hard to, for me to evaluate these cards, but I don't think this is a bad one. It is a stall card. I just want to point that out. It does a lot of stalling, not much winning. Uh, however, it does kind of lock down stuff, which in some cases can be considered a bit of a pseudo removal spell. So I kind of like that. Uh, I still, I'm still kind of leaning towards that Death Spark uh, and potentially the Lake of the Dead, but I don't know yet. I think I'm going to pass on this, uh, but I don't think this is a bad card. I actually think this is perfectly playable. Uh, Foresight is a sorcery for one and a blue. Search your library for any three cards and remove them from the game. Shuffle your library afterwards and then draw a card at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep. Uh, interesting card. It's card selection and deck thinning, uh, which is really interesting. I say cards. It's actually just deck thinning. Uh, it is card draw, which is cool, but I don't love this. I kind of just think this is a bad card. Um, yeah, I guess you can kind of get rid of some of the cards you really just don't need, but I wouldn't necessarily want to put cards in my deck that I don't need. So <laughs> I don't really love that for draft. Uh, maybe there's, I'm sure, I'm certain there is a very good kind of constructed way of breaking a card like this, but I don't think it's in limited. Uh, so I'm just going to pass on it here. Uh, Gorilla Tactics is an instant for one and a red. It deals two damage to target creature or player. If a spell or effect controlled by an opponent causes you to discard Gorilla Tactics from your hand, reveal it to all players, and it deals four damage to target creature or player instead. Okay, I gotta be honest. This, I think, is so far the pick. Uh, it is only two damage, but 
It's two damage at instant speed for only two mana. That is better than anything I think we've seen so far. Uh, it's a very safe pick solely because it is a removal spell. Removal's obviously top of the list. You're going to want it. Uh, it's a very easy way of saying, yes, I'm going to pick this card. Uh, so I'm copping out a little bit, I'll be honest. But uh, it does have random upside if you happen to discard it. I think that's interesting. Uh, but honestly, at its worst, it's two mana for two damage at instant speed, and I'm okay with that. I'm 100% I'm in. Uh, I think that's a better pick than anything we've gotten so far. Potentially, Lake of the Dead is better, I will go ahead and say. But I don't know in limited if that card is quite as good as it is in Constructed. Uh, and so I, I think I would rather take something like this, which is just a safe pick, if I'm first drafting this set, I feel like that's a much safer way of, of going about it. Uh, and then our last card here uh, is Baldovian. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, War Makers. It is a 3-3 three, three for 4 in a red. It has Rampage 1. Uh, can attack the turn it comes in, into play on your side of the field. So it is basically got haste. I'll be honest, I don't remember what Rampage does. So it's going to be really hard for me to evaluate this card. But... I do actually think this is like perfectly okay, regardless of uh, if the Rampage mechanic isn't a huge setback, I'm kind of in for this, uh, only because it's a Haster for five. Yeah, it's a little late. It is just a 3-3, but Haste is, I, I think, pretty high up on the list during this time of Magic uh, in terms of mechanics that you want, and I kind of like that. So I don't hate this card, but I do think, uh, I'll be honest, I think Guerrilla Tactics is the safe pick. Please, by the way, if anybody does know what Rampage does, uh, I'm going to look it up after this video, but please share it in the comment section just so everybody knows. Uh, if I think about it, I'll also add it up as well. Uh, but I do think Guerrilla Tactics is the pick. It's the safe one, at least in my opinion. We did get Lake of the Dead, which is in a great pool. Uh, very, very excited. It's obviously not Force of Will, but very, very good. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this pack opening. If you did, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.